In today's video, we are going to look at a case study where an individual is moving $300,000, which is money just sitting in cash, money in the bank. He's moving it into a whole life insurance policy. We're going to look at some different ways that he can fund the policy and then looking to stop payments altogether, meaning after he gets the $300,000 in, what's it look like if he stops, doesn't add another penny, and then what does it look like if he continues to add money? So to provide a little bit of background on this case, this is an individual where his income fluctuates quite a bit. Now, he stated up front that he may be able to fund the policy with $300,000 per year. But here's the thing. Whole life insurance, particularly a policy designed for maximum cash value, is something that is still relatively new to him. And jumping into a policy where it's designed to handle $300,000 per year in funding, that scares him. He said, you know, while I think I might be able to do that, here's my fear. I don't want to take out this large policy. And then because my income fluctuates, I'm uncertain that it's going to be high as it has, in, as it has been in recent years. What if it's not? Now all of a sudden, I have this big policy where perhaps I was able to max fund it for one year, but now I can't pay the minimum premium or I can only pay the minimum premium. Meaning I don't want to take out a policy that's too big and inefficient, and then I have buyer's remorse after the fact. I want to get it right from the get-go, which I 100% understand and respect. So to summarize what I just said, he does not want to commit to a large premium, but he wants the option to heavily fund the policy in the future. So I've got $300,000 right now. I'd like to be able to get that into a policy, and then after that, set it up so I can commit to a minimum premium, not a large amount. And then if things go well, like I think they will, but it's not guaranteed, then I'll add more money. This way, I'm not stressed out about the policy at all. If I'm not stressed out, if I'm not thinking about it, I can focus on things that are very, very productive. And then naturally, I'll be able to fund the policy with more money. So we're going to look at two different plans here. We've got plan A, which is the plan he mentioned that he is interested in, which is this, fund the policy with $100,000 per year for three years. After that, he wants the option to stop, or we're going to show him an option where he can stop altogether. The minimum premium thereafter, $10,000 per year. However, he can fund between $10,000 and $100,000 per year. It's actually between zero because he has the option to stop. And you'll see what I mean. We're going to look at an example of the same policy with these different scenarios after the first three years. Why he was interested in this, this plan is because he, he's presently in a position where he has $300,000 in cash. And he said, if I've got three years to move this money into a policy, that gives me three years to refill my bank account. So I can see exactly what my income looks like over the next three years, how much excess cash that I cash flow that I have that I just put into my bank account, and then whatever I have left over, I'll continue to fund the policy. If it's at another 100K per year, I'll keep doing that. But that's what I'm comfortable with, specifically knowing that I've got three years where if I earn zero, I feel like I'm good. But then after the third year, if I've got another 300K in cash, well, then I know that I can fund the policy for at least another three years. So that's plan A. Let's take a look at that guy first, shall we? So here is the design of the plan A policy. This is an illustration with Mass Mutual, And here's what we've got. So quick breakdown as to this illustration, our annual outlay here, 100K per year for three years. My question, if this is me, and I'm not in the business and I don't know how to read these illustrations, is where? Where is that $100,000 going? Because where can it go? I can direct it toward the premium or toward different riders, particularly, particularly PUA riders and such. So we have our premium in this example at 10%. And then we are juicing the policy with everything else. We've got a term rider, juicing the PUA rider, and it's a clean 10% premium. So what this allows him to do, after the third year, if he wants to continue to fund the policy, he can. In this particular example, he is not. So what we've got going on here in the annual net outlay column, there's your $100,000 for three years, and in year four, 
the annual net outlay, which that would be your actual payment, how much we're illustrating you paying into the policy is zero. However, the column to the left, what do you notice? This annual surrender of $10,000. What that is, is the premium that is still due, but you're not paying it. What's happening here is we're allowing the dividends and interest to pay the premium for us. So in this example, we just ran that indefinitely. We can ex exercise a reduced paid up option, which, we, which will eliminate the premium. We did not do that in this option, and you'll see why in a minute, because we're going to look in examples where he keeps on funding the policy. But no more payments being made here. Here's your money column net cash value, and then there's your net death benefit in the far right. First year, 92% of your payment in cash value. Break even, year four. So you funded it for three years. The fourth year, you paid nothing. The cash value appreciated to just about $301,000. You've paid in a total of $300,000. That's why year four is your break even point. That is the first year that the cash value is equal to or greater than your total payments. And it continues to appreciate over time. So this is plan A with zero payments after the first year. Let's look at this, but we're gonna look at it on Excel just to simplify things a bit. So what we'll see here on the left, we've got 100K per year for three years. That's the option we just looked at. You'll notice that the cash values are identical with what we just looked at in the illustration. Now to the right, actually, before I do that, there's something I wanna hit on here, because this question comes up sometimes. Why does the death benefit drop after year seven? So if we go back to the illustration, you'll see that there was a column entitled one year term. It was a term insurance rider that was attached to the policy. In year eight, it suddenly dropped to zero. There's nothing there. What we did, was cut the term rider after year seven. That has to do with the MEC test on a policy, preventing a taxable event. We've got other videos that provide detail on that. But what we're doing is reducing the death benefit, which helped reduce the expenses, especially if we're not paying anything, so I can reduce the drag and allow the cash value to grow at a faster pace. That's why we do that, and I'll also add that it is optional. But moving on, the next scenario, what we've got here, is the exact same policy. If we look at the illustration, it is identical with the exception of one thing. The first three years, do you notice any difference there in cash value and death benefit? No. The difference is here, we're assuming he continues to fund $10,000 per year, as long as possible, which is through age 85 with this particular product. But here he continues to pay 10K, which is only the premium, and he's in year four, He's heavily funded the policy. If you look at the difference in value, what is it? Just about the $10,000 premium payment he made, a little bit more, because that premium payment at this point is showing up in cash value. He's earning dividends and interest, so he's going to continue to receive the compounding here, which is nice. But what this demonstrates for him is the fact that he can pay just that minimum $10,000 if he wants to. On the right, after year seven, what do you notice about the death benefit? Just like the last example, it drops. But because he's added more money to the policy, cash value is higher, the cash value is higher, the death benefit will naturally be higher as well. So the only difference with those two is in this option, he continued to make the $10,000 premium payment, whereas in this option, he stopped it altogether. Let's look at the last option, shall we? We'll look at this in blue. Here we go. 100K per year for 25 years. So this is the exact same policy, only we're continuing to illustrate $100,000 annually. And the nice part about this is it's the same policy and we don't have to declare upfront what we're going to do. What we typically like to do as an agent is let the company know that this is a potential plan to make sure that they factor that in when they're underwriting the policy. Some companies need to do that, some, some won't do that, um, but it is important for the agent to provide that awareness. But with all that said, it's the exact same policy, exact same design, only difference is we've got a heavy PUA going in from year four onward, a total of $100,000 per year. 
So naturally, <laughs> we're going to have a lot more money in this example because it's showing, hey, if I just keep feeding this thing through age 65, I get two and a half million dollars in, there's my cash value, there's my death benefit. This is all based on the present dividend rate, which will likely change, but we'll track the performance as time passes. That's what it looks like. Pretty cool to see that I can do this all with the same policy. So that was plan A. Let's wrap up with plan B because this was a lot of fun. So in looking at plan A, he liked that, everything looked good, but just in having a conversation with him, and when we connected, he was at a stage where he knew what he wanted, but he needed a little bit of guidance first. He just wanted to see some different options to compare with what he had been looking at with a, a different firm previously. What did he mention earlier? That he does not want to commit to a large premium. That's a drawback there. A high premium is a drawback to him. So he wants to commit, commit to an amount that does not feel burdensome to him. So if he wants to continue to make payments after the third year, so for example, that 10K per year, if that doesn't bother him, he knows he can continue to fund the policy. He wants the option to scale more money into the policy. So plan B, this was an option that we decided to show that I thought might be interesting, interesting just based on our conversation. I'd like to see this if I were him. And you can pick either one. But this is going to show the following. A 300K lump sum. So the money you have in cash right now, this is excess cash that he's got. Just move it all into the policy. After that, the minimum is very close to 10,000. Here, it's 12,000. The minimum premium, I'll pull up the illustration in less than one minute. The minimum premium is under $10,000. Just with the term insurance riders and everything that comes with that policy, our true minimum commitment initially is about 12K. But then he also has the ability to increase funding. So let's take a look here. First, we'll look at the illustration. So the last illustration we looked at, the 100K per year for three years, that was with Mass Mutual. This scenario is with Guardian. What do we see? Net premium, $300,000 in the first year. Now, same question initially, where? Where is the money going? Up here is your true base premium, a little over $9,000. But then what I'll highlight, here's a term insurance rider, Here's another term insurance rider, the cost that is. So if we add all of that together, it's less than 12,000, but I just rounded up to 12K as far as the scheduled minimum payment because it's about a thousand bucks per month. So it's a clean number, that's why I did that. <laughs> but the true minimum is the cost of those different term riders combined. Then what we have, PUA payments going in, total first year payment, $300,000, death benefit, is higher in this example. The reason why is if I wanna start with a $300,000 payment, I need a death benefit that gives me a MEC limit of how much? $300,000. That's why the death benefit is higher in this particular example. But look at your first year cash value. He pays in 300K. What's the net cash value in the first year? 282. That's cash rich right out of the gates. And a quick side note to this, how you're able to do this. You couldn't always do this with Guardian policies. We couldn't illustrate it. And the reason why is because the maximum PUA that we can illustrate when we're designing these is 10X, whatever the base premium is. However, more recently than not, when the industry went through the changes of guaranteed rates and such, and they revamped their product portfolio, in this case, Guardian. What they did was allow a first year PUA payment of 50X the base premium. So what we're able to do here is stretch the limit in the first year. Where we came up with that base premium is it still allows us to model 100K per year going in. So what we've got in this particular illustration is an example where he pays in 300K right out of the gates and then says, okay, I'm out of all my excess cash, just money sitting in the bank. I do have access to it here, so it's not as if it's gone, but I can't fund it at 100K per year. Maybe I can if I have a good year, 
but it kind of throws that plan at the window, the plan where I can fund 100K per year for three years, feel really, really comfortable, and then see where I'm at year four. That's gone now. So what happens here? Well, now he could stop payments altogether, but we just illustrated 12K per year. And we can actually drop that to 10K in year eight very easily if we'd like. But we're gonna keep it at 12 and then scale the payments back up to 100K beginning year 11 at his age of 50. So like the last scenario, let's take a look at good old Excel. So here's what we've got. On the left is the first scenario we looked at. So what I'll do actually, so on the left, we've got a scenario which is a little different than the illustration we looked at. The right is the one we just saw, but this shows a 300K lump sum and then a total of 500K going in over three years. If he does do well the next two years, as he very well could do because he's done well financially, which is how he has the excess funds in cash, but that shows, hey, you've got the ability to do this, but you don't have to. With the exact same policy, you can do this. So if you're attracted to that 300K lump sum up front, which really accelerates the break even point, by the way, you could just do this 12K per year. And some years you might get 100K in, some years you might get 30K in, some years it might be 40 or 20, then back up to 100. You've got a lot of flexibility there. So while this illustrates 12K per year, that's not what you are committed to. You've got flexibility in reality. But this was meant to demonstrate keeping a low payment for a long time. If you said, yeah, I can handle that, no problem. And then begin to aggressively overfund it. 100K per year through age 62. And why we've got these oddball numbers in years 24 and 25 is mainly because I want to get a total of 1.75 million in for a clean number so I can see how much I paid in and how much I had in the policy. Why that death benefit drops there is because we are dropping one of the term insurance riders on the policy. Remember, we had two of them. The last one doesn't drop until, doesn't expire until age 62 or 63 in that example. But it shows a large lump sum up front with the ability to still pay a minimum premium, then at the same time, scale payments up again in the future. So it was a nice option to show because that's something that people often see or hear about and feel or, or express. I didn't know you could do that. I would have liked to have seen that in the beginning. Now we've seen it. So we've seen plan A, which is what he's interested in, along with plan B. Now he's got time to review the options and select the one that he's most comfortable with with the company and product that he prefers. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That's a little bit of our process and how we like to work with individuals, especially when it comes to being creative with policy design and looking at different options. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but please let us know if it did help. Uh, let us know what option you would pick. If you would pick uh, plan A, the 100K per year for three years, or plan B, the 300K lump sum in the first year with flexibility thereafter. Again, I hope this helps and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve here with IBC Global. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you're interested in a whole life insurance policy and you'd like to work with our company in setting it up, please visit our website, ibcglobalinc.com. We would love to work with you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I hope this helps.